Let's do this. Corbett's Corner here. I am in my house in Connecticut, fresh off the, uh, you like this? How about this? A little U.S. Open polo collaboration. Uh, one of the coolest sporting events I've ever been to. Djokovic absolutely uh, lays an egg. I thought he threw the match. I mean, how about you put a first serve in play? Uh, good God. So Medvedev breaks through for his first Grand Slam title. Djokovic misses out in the first calendar Grand Slam in about 50 years. Uh, but first, of course, we have to start with NFL week one and the Falcons stink. We stink. We suck. All right. So glasses on. Got some notes for you here. The Falcons stink as expected. I told you, I don't know why they were a home favorite against the Eagles. Arthur Smith, offensive guru. How about six points? I told you young way. Koo was a top five player on this team. That's wrong. He's the best player on this team. Two field goals. That's all we're good for in this week one absolute blowout. Kyle Pitts was like the only top 15 pick in this year's draft, not to score in week one. How did the Falcons obviously miss on their pick? I know it's overreaction week one, but Julio Jones, we miss him, but we also don't miss him. We'll get into what he did with the Titans later, uh, an absolute non-factor in the Titans loss to the Arizona Cardinals. But all the defense have to do with the Falcons all year is just shade Calvin Ridley. And then who's their backup, their second receiver across from him, Russell Gage now, Olamide Zacchaeus, Kyle Pitts, you know, is just kind of wandering around like a rookie. That offensive line, yikes. I can't let Matt Ryan skate on this. He had, what, like 30-plus attempts and still was under five yards per attempt, like 150 yards. He looked like an old man. Uh, but, again, I can't really blame him because of that offensive line and now the depleted weapons. What's in our backfield, Mike Davis? Come on. Falcons stink. We've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, coming up, I I don't know. I you know, thank goodness Boston College is two and zero because I, I I'm glad I didn't watch a single second in this Falcons game. I was at the U.S. Open, but you know, I'm working this weekend Sunday too. I'm not going to even turn on that Buccaneers game. It's going to be a bloodbath. This team sucks. Uh, you get rid of Julio for a bag of donuts, and it looks like he might be worth a bag of donuts. But that's a weapon gone. Julio and Calvin Ridley was at least something that you could pair with Kyle Pitts. Now it's Ridley and Zacchaeus paired with Kyle Pitts. That's not exactly working. Arthur Smith uh, looked absolutely in over his head. Speaking of teams that stink, how about the Minnesota Vikings? I tried to tell you guys. Only bet I won this weekend on NFL football, Bengals, plus three. Easy. In overtime, they win. Um, wasn't Mike Zimmer supposed to be a defensive guru? Haven't we been saying that for five years? I think he had one good year where the, where the defense was that great. Um, and that was when Case Keenan was their quarterback and they made the NFC championship game. Other than that, he's been terrible. I don't know. This dude has got one of the longest leashes in the NFL. Here's what Cincinnati did against Mike Zimmer's. Oh, the new look defense, the new look defense. Hey, we're going to be better this year. Burrow, 20 of 27. You had a sophomore receiver, Higgins, running around you. You had the rookie receiver who complains that he's dropping balls because they're bigger in the NFL and they don't have the stripe. He tears you up for over 100 yards, a Hail Mary before the half. And a touchdown, five receptions. I mean, my goodness. Uh, the cornerbacks are terrible. Uh, Joe Mixon almost led the, led the league in rushing in week one against your so-called back defense. Um, Vikings, you head to Arizona next. Then you host the Seahawks. Then you host the Browns. You might very well be 0-4 by the end of week four. Yikes. Zimmer should be one of the first coaches fired this year. It, I'm sorry. This is what, year five now? Kirk Cousins experiment? His numbers look fine, but he's still Kirk Cousins. He's not doing anything to help get this team over the Kirk Cousins threshold, take this team to the next step. Uh, Zimmer, I, bro, tough go here. If you go 0-4, I don't know how that seat doesn't continue to get hotter. So you go to Arizona next. They obliterate the Titans. Uh, this game was over before it even started. Kyler Murray dancing around. He's running loops around the defense before he throws a dime. Uh, I, I had them as one of my stock risers because I didn't think we would expect that from the Cardinals team that nobody is talking about in the NFC West. They thought they were going to be the bottom of that division. Now they look like a playoff team. Hell, they beat a playoff team. Um, Julio Jones, they made him look docile. Six targets, three catches, 29 yards. Yeah, Julio, uh, you really wanted to get out of Atlanta for that, for Tannehill, barely getting you the ball. Uh, interesting. So I thought that, yes, yeah, sick, Julio. Good job. Derrick Henry couldn't do a thing. And that Cardinal defense looks scary. Chandler Jones, five sacks against a, one of the better left tackles in Taylor Lewan. Two forced fumbles. You've got Jordan Hicks rushing up the middle. Other side, J.J. Watt. 
You've got Buda Baker. You've got Isaiah Simmons flying. You could put him anywhere on the defense. This Cardinals team is scary. Um, and we'll see how bad they can make the Vikings look here in week two. Urban Meyer, the savior, the head coach guru, he wins everywhere he goes, except when he goes to Houston, Texas, and he loses to probably one of the worst teams in the NFL. Uh, wow. The Texans lead the AFC South. Who saw that coming? They're the only one and no team. Every other team lost. Um, Trevor Lawrence had some flashes, the rookie quarterbacks overall. Of course, you had Lawrence, you had uh, Trey Lance just for a cup of coffee, throw his first touchdown pass. Uh, and the Niners win. Mac Jones looked good, but he fell short. Zach Wilson looked like a rookie quarterback in the first half. And then he was able to figure some stuff out, but still ended up losing. So again, uh, Trevor Lawrence looked great with the three touchdowns. He looked not so great with the three picks to a very terrible Texans defense. Um, so we'll see how Urban Meyer, is that team going to be any good? This was the worst team in football last year. You had Trevor Lawrence, you had Urban Meyer. And what's it get you? How about you lose as a road favorite? in Houston uh, to one of the worst teams in the NFL and Tyrod Taylor. How about this? Was this the shock of the week? Was this, what's your week one shocker, right? Because I think I did not have green Bay putting up three points and allowing five touchdowns to famous Jameis Winston. I, I thought I was laughing at my buddies who were saying Jameis for MVP. Now that he has LASIK. I, he's gotta be, he's gotta be near the top of the board. Uh, five touchdowns. I mean, basically did whatever he wanted against uh, the Green Bay Packers, the team that's been in the NFC Championship the last two years or uh, contending for it. Uh, shocking to me. Uh, Jameis for MVP may be gaining some steam. But what should Sean Payton skate on this? Was he just a doofus last year? Like, what? you clearly had a better quarterback behind Taysom Hill, and you still went with him anyway. So should we be applauding Sean Payton, or should we be – you know, kind of questioning, wait, why did it take so long for James to get the starting job anyway? If he clearly was, he clearly was the better quarterback. I mean, you got a quarterback and then you got a tight end and you started the tight end over James Winston for so long. Now you finally make the change. And all of a sudden James looks like the MVP. Uh, that was NFL week one Falcon stink. Uh, dear God, let's get into some college football, Boston college, lots of thoughts to get to there. <clears throat> Okay, so BC laying a lot of points as a favorite on the road at UMass, and I laid way too much money on it. Uh, Phil Dracovic goes down first quarter. I mean, say goodbye to the bet. It was there. I mean, BC basically controlled the game, but it was an embarrassing win because, I mean, the win probability was high the entire game, but it was an embarrassing win because the defense did not play well back-to-back uh, -back weeks. The penalties were very sloppy, very uncharacteristic of Jeff Halfley. He took accountability for it in his post-game comments and said he thought he had it fixed. He guesses that he does not. So I think Halfley's, Halfley's going to really work on the Temple week. We're going on the road to face Temple, more on that in a bit. But taking away from this 45-28 win over UMass, which is fine, Backup quarterback gets in, gets out. We're still 2-0. and I still have confidence this is an 11-1 team. Football Power Index on ESPN.com has them as a 9-3 and team. That's a great second year for Jeff Halfley, and I think it's only going to be more dangerous if you have a healthy Phil Jerkovic. Still no word on Jerkovic's health. It's apparently a wrist injury, so he leaves in the first quarter. He's on the depth chart here on Monday, as of Monday, heading into a Saturday game. If you put a gun to my head right now, I would say he is not going to play. Now, Dennis Grossell, this guy is like a super senior. He's been the backup quarterback for Boston College forever. Um, and he's great. My God, he's a great. I just realized my camera broke on my phone. Um, he's a great quarterback. I mean, look at the stats against UMass. Look at his. He had a huge throw against Clemson in Death Valley last year. This guy can play. Uh, so I'm confident in Grossell if he does get the nod against Temple, which I think it is trending to. They should beat Temple, but this is a Vegas giving them a lot of credit. 16 and a half points on the road after BC just beat UMass by only 17. I don't know if I can lay that again. I mean, I will because it's BC, probably not as much money because my confidence is not as high. Uh, yeah, you know, the, the Temple, you should beat them with Grossell. Hopefully you get Dracovic healthy for when Mizzou comes to town the week after, two weeks, and then you head to Clemson. So uh, we'll, let's run through the schedule here for BC. Uh, you need a healthy Dracovic if you want to go with my original prediction of 11 to one, but I'm sticking with it for now. Clemson does not look as dominant in years past. One and one, 
They're 0 and 2 against the number. They face South Carolina State or Upstate, one of these cupcake programs, and they couldn't even cover against them. Temple looks okay. They beat Akron this weekend, fine, but they got destroyed by Rutgers. Now Rutgers is 2 and 0, and they just beat an ACC opponent in Syracuse. So is Temple a little bit better than maybe I think? BC should beat them. I don't know if it'll be by 17, however. Uh, Mizzou, they fail to cover against Central Michigan. They fail to cover against Kentucky. They lose. Five and a half point dogs on the road in Lexington. They lose. I think BC and Mizzou are very similar teams. I think BC is going to win. I think they will be a little bit favored, depending on what happens this week with both teams. But uh, you need Dracovic for that game to make me feel a little bit better. Um, Let's see. Yes, BC, one of five undefeated teams left in the ACC. Okay, it's early. We'll see, but that's still good. NC State, we're going to face them off a bye. NC State just lost to a really kind of mediocre Mississippi State team on the road. Mississippi State nearly lost at home to Louisiana Tech in week one. Uh, They bounced back and beat NC State. I think NC State's a little bit overrated. I think that's going to be possibly a win in the column for Boston College. How about Louisville then? They get destroyed by Ole Miss without a head coach. Then they come back and they fail to cover against Eastern Kentucky. Uh, Dub, Georgia Tech loses to Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois just lost to Wyoming the week after. Georgia Tech, Dub, Florida State. I told you. Under five and a half wins. Florida State sucks. Any new coach that's like, oh, this is the new guy, the new savior. No, Florida State, has, they're almost cursed since Bobby Bowden, rest in peace, but since he left coaching, not left us. Uh, they just lost to an FCS school at home, Jacksonville State, and it, it, they lost on a Hail Mary. And it was like one of the worst defended Hail Marys I've ever seen. At home, you lose to Jacksonville State. Crazy. So FSU, dub. That's easy. Uh, Wake Forest, 0-2 against the number despite being 2-0, and they've faced shit teams. Hard not to be confident as a BC fan, even though we did not perform well against UMass. We had injuries. Zay Flowers did return to this game after he left it, too. So if Flowers and Jakovic were out, that was going to be a disaster. Flowers returns Jakovic. We've got our fingers crossed, hoping for his health. Um, Let's get into the Minnesota Gophers, another team that is trending down after week two despite winning. So uh, tackling some more college football headlines. I know the NFL tends to swallow out college football, but I'm locked in. So I hope you are as well. And if you're not, I hope I get you locked in here with uh, some information. So the Gophers don't look very good at home versus Miami of Ohio. Just escape. Uh, They lost Ibrahim or their running back for the, the leading running back against Ohio State. He's out for the year. They plug and play this new guy who rushed for over a buck 50. So again, Just running back by committee, that's fine. Tanner Morgan does not look very accurate. This is now two games so far this season. His completion percentage is 52%. Uh, That's not very good. Now you've got a pretty tough test again at Colorado, who just gave A&M a scare. A&M lost their quarterback, but Colorado hung tough. That defense played, and all of a sudden Colorado is a two-point favorite in Boulder because Nebraska, excuse me, Nebraska, uh, the Gophers will be heading to Colorado as a dog football power index mentioned to ESPN.com has the Gophers going five and seven under PJ Fleck here. Uh, yikes. Is that going to get it done? Row the boat, right? Ski you ma not looking that good for the Gophers. Again, they could, that, that's if they play well too. There are a lot of these coin, coin toss games, I think uh, for Minnesota who did not look good in week two escape with a victory. Their quarterback Morgan, 52% completion percentage. Uh, is that going to play against Colorado? This would be a big win for the Gophers would bring their stock a little bit back up if they could get that upset win on the road. But I, what have they showed me here? I think Colorado has had the more impressive season so far because now Minnesota's two touchdown loss to Ohio state does not look very good. Let's get to that. Oregon upsets Ohio state. Anthony Brown still does not impress me. What I mean, come at me. I I understand. I, I don't think either of these teams were that impressive. Ohio state has shown, okay. They kind of let a Minnesota team hang around here. Here's the stats here. OSU's defense is not as good. And obviously they're not as good without Justin Fields. CJ Stroud putting up points, but showing freshman mistakes. 31 points allowed to Minnesota, 35 to Oregon. And it is an Oregon team that barely got by Fresno State. Um, Here's the thing is Ohio State could still win out, and they're going to be in the playoff, at least the playoff conversation. So, again, Ohio State season is nowhere near over. Uh, They could still, just like Clemson. If Clemson wins out, they're going to be in the conversation as well. Prove it time for Oregon. Toughest test. They've got a rather easy schedule. Their toughest test is going to be in a couple of weeks at UCLA. This is on October 23rd. 
I think they're going to roll into that game undefeated as the schedule lines up. UCLA, we've shown, uh, looks pretty good. After they beat LSU, they continue to be a ranked opponent looking to be at the top of the Pac-12. Interesting. Um, but again, Oregon played poorly against Fresno State, so are they going to play poor, poorly against some teams like Cal and these other kind of Pac-12 teams that maybe there's a wacky upset here and there throughout the course of the season? Uh, so that's interesting. Oregon uh, is setting up for things. They're in the top five now. OSU slides to, I believe, ninth. Um, but again, if they win out, they're going to be in it. Big Ten champs. So that losing to Oregon is a good loss, um, even though I don't think personally Oregon's that great. How about a bad win? Notre Dame almost falls to Toledo. Yikes. And look what just happened to Florida State. They nearly lost to the Seminoles. So Notre Dame... <laughs> Not looking as hot this year, and they've got a real tough part of the schedule for a bit of a weaker team. Purdue, looking like a strong 2-0 team, at least thus far. Scani, Cincy, at least those are all at home. Then you head to Blacksburg. Virginia Tech's the one team on BC schedule that I'm actually like, ah, you know, that probably is looking more and more like a loss, except it's at Chestnut Hill. So, again, cocky BC fan, I'm still confident, 11-1. Uh, get in hashtag uh, so at Blacksburg and then USC and then UNC so you're getting a lot of these in South Bend but that's a tough schedule and when you're performing like that against Toledo and Florida State that tough schedule might come back to bite you um, defense has got to be a worry for Notre Dame like Cone's been fine the Wisconsin quarter he's made some mistakes but I mean he's still completion percentage great yard it's great six tutties two interceptions you don't want to see um, but I think the defense is certainly something to be a little bit more worrisome, especially against tougher competition. I mean, you're going to have to go against guys like Slovis at UFC. You're going to have to go against uh, Sam Howell, UNC. Blacksburg can run it down your throat. I don't know why it's called Blacksburg. In Blacksburg, Virginia Tech can run it down your throat. Cincy, I mean, that's, that's a high-powered offense. Wisconsin, uh, that's going to be kind of a revenge game, right, for Jack Cohn as Wisconsin comes to town. That's interesting. Um, Iowa beats Iowa State in Ames. This was college game day's game of the week. I was not high on Auto Iowa State or Brock Purdy, their quarterback, who did not look good. A lot of interceptions. People, it, people are saying Iowa's a powerhouse. Yes, they look great. They tore apart two solid teams, Indiana, Iowa State, all at home, on the road, in order. I, I, I want to see him go against Penn State. I'm still pumping the brakes on Iowa. I feel like there's always going to be – uh, competition, even where you don't see it coming in, the, in a league like Big Ten, in a conference like Big Ten, there's always going to be some surprise upset where you look over a squad and all of a sudden you don't play well and they snip you, right? Um, as was the case with the Clay Helton specialty at home versus Stanford. Uh, we are who we thought you were, USD, Clay Helton. How about Steve Sarkeesian specialty at Arkansas? Good for Arkansas, huge win, huge program win. I told you Texas going to the SEC is going to be a rude awakening, and rude it was. They're not even in the league yet. A non-conference special at Fayetteville, and they get demolished. Um, yeah, so Sarkeesian, Clay Helton, yikes. Um, BYU, a team I really like this year. They beat Utah. Watch out for the Cougars. I like them as a home dog this week in an interesting game as they welcome in ranked opponent Arizona State and former NFL head coach Herm Edwards. Um, plus three and a half at home. Go Cougs. Uh, Miami, not very good. They barely get away from Appalachian State. I was on, uh, what is it, the Mountaineers? I was on Appalachian State plus nine. Uh, and the Miami just able to escape App State by two points. How about the cat that got saved from that game? That was crazy. That was the viral video of the weekend. Miami, their fans still confident after getting blown out by Bama and then escaping uh, a group of five team at home. I know Appalachian State's a good program, but now you've got Michigan State, who has a new head coach, Mel Tucker, who came from Colorado. He gets an upset win initially in week one. They keep it going in week two. It's a pretty decent Michigan State squad. I would not overlook them if I was Miami. Canes minus six and a half at home. I'm keeping an eye on Sparty there just for a second. Mentioned the U.S. Open was sick. Djokovic, I was all over him. I, I couldn't believe. I, it was like nothing I'd ever seen. Djokovic is arguably the face of the, the best tennis player of our generation, right? He had a chance to pass Federer and the doll if he could get the Grand Slam win yesterday. He could not. And it wasn't even like Medvedev just destroyed him. It was Djokovic was just lobbing shit over there. And Medvedev was just having his way with him, throwing him all over the court. Medvedev didn't even have to face like a first serve ever. It was crazy. He's hitting net. He's double faulting Djokovic. Couldn't find anything. 
Um, it was a pro Djokovic crowd, full capacity crowd in Flushing Meadows. One of the greatest atmospheres I've been. There were celebs left and right. Brad Pitt. I'll talk about this more on Winging and show some photos. Brad Pitt wearing a bucket hat, trying to go incognito. We spotted him. Ben Stiller, Rami Malek. Alec Baldwin looked like he was just sweating off a bender from the night before. He stayed for one set, and then he got the hell out of there. Uh, we'll dive into that in the new episode of Winging It coming out this week. Um, U.S. Open, one of the – I mean, that, I want to go – I crossed the final off of the list. That was awesome. I want to go to a UFC main card event. Uh, tennis quickly being one of my favorite sports. Um, it was very exciting, even though it wasn't the outcome that I expected. Did get to see also another cool thing on my trip here along the East Coast, D.C., and then up here to Connecticut and New York. Uh, I saw Vladdy Jr. play in person. We were right behind home plate in Baltimore, the Orioles. Crazy game. Orioles hitting home runs. They beat the Blue Jays, and then as soon as we left, the Blue Jays ended up hitting like 45 home runs. That series, which just ended this weekend, um, gave Vladdy Jr. a little nod. and kind of made eye contact. I gave him a little salute and gave me the head nod back. Awesome. Life complete. Uh, I love doing shit like that. Staying with baseball, the Cards get a big series win over the Reds after a series split with the Dodgers. Okay, hanging around. I like it. Ten games coming up for the Cardinals. That is going to do or die the season. I believe it's three with the Mets, three with the Padres, four with the Brewers. Not sure if all those games are accurate, but those teams are accurate. accurate. Mets, Padres, all fighting for a postseason berth. Brewers are fighting to just knock us out of the playoffs, right, as they have the stranglehold on the Central. Um, the postseason, the race for it is heating up this September. Cardinals still playing meaningful baseball. They're just keeping me in. Football starts, so now you're kind of fighting for viewership. Uh, the Cardinals would love to see them make the postseason again and hopefully this time make a run, but we got to get there first. Corbett's Corner on a Monday. I am on the road in the studio. I return back to Minneapolis this Tuesday. i got a busy week ahead doing like 21 games uh, for play-by-play. I'm doing, I think, two soccer matches tomorrow after I get off my flight, uh, swimming meet on Thursday night. And I've got seven hockey games on Friday, seven on Saturday, and five on Sunday. Oof. Hey, that's the price you pay as a broadcaster, right? Um, we'll talk to you later this week with another week of core bets so you can fade all of our plays. Not a great week for football for us, uh, but, hey, that's the name of the game in gambling. Um, and we'll get some thoughts on uh, Bengals from Kirill Smolyansky. We'll talk uh, Vikings after they fall apart in their week one. Uh, we'll kind of get those two perspectives. We'll talk the Bears with Matthew Weiss. Lots to get to in the NFL, college football, the best time of the year for a sports fan. And we're glad you're sticking out with us here on the Dylan Corbett Podcast Network. All right, we'll talk to you later.